controversial subjects with the facts can be tense. But we are a sub science here to make things make sense. Whew. Hey. Tis a Friday, so you um, know I will be partaking in said uh, Delta 9 tetrahydrocannabidiol wow. tonight. If I'm going to be scientifically accurate with the I mean, was the, the term, weekend part necessary for you to bring up? <laughs> Girl, you know I have tried to kick back to the weekend only, and this is why we are doing this episode, because I am curious about what happens when you quit. Not that I have. Are you considering quitting? Um... It's not that I'm considering quitting. But you're just curious about that. But I know that in my life I have quit, like when I've gone traveling and not been able to get marijuana. And I've just been really curious. That's (laughs) not quitting. That's like taking a two-week break. Oh, I did take a two-week break, though, in the fall. I've I've obviously, like, been thinking about what happens when you you stop. to leave. (laughs) You're throwing it on me just because you've upticked your... Your THC. I'm gonna well, throw you we're under. in a pandemic. I'm gonna throw you in front of that we're car that's pa- being <laughs> driven by someone on CBD right now. <laughs> oh my god, no, we're in a pandemic. I'm not judging you at all, and I'm not judging myself either. I'm just saying, you're tis definitely... legal in it, Canada. It is. Yeah, we literally buy it from our government. We so. buy it from Justin Trudeau. He delivers it to our house himself <laughs> every weekend. Every he's week, just week like, he's hey exhausted. Guys. Now he's in a mask. He's like, <laughs> here you are. Um, That's not true about him, but we do order it from our government (laughs) and it does show up in like random cars. I'm like, who is delivering this? Yeah, it's always like a different... A really nice, friendly, like a local neighbor. And I'm like, where did this come from? But thanks, bud. And they're always cheerful. Glad the system's working. Uh, But so you don't think you want to quit, but you're generally just curious about what happens when somebody yeah i guess i'm getting there she's 32 (laughs) she's breaking down she's figuring out what she needs to do she's about to have kids at some point in the next minute yeah i don't know if i'm gonna be stone daddy (laughs) but okay let's get into it because i found this fascinating um i read deeply this book called from bud to brain a psychiatrist view of marijuana How do you read so many books i uh, listen to it not blink as this oh, okay this was a real yeah like audiobook yeah and it um you're insane whoa something just made a loud noise oh, it was ernie with his phone uh, oh god like, as if you forgot we owned oh dog. my gosh i was like the asteroid hit okay we have about three minutes left see you later everyone we love um so so much information here is from 2020 that i just want to update people about what my studies from 2022 oh god you guys are getting the goods <laughs> to imagine this is free. <laughs> this is free. Yeah. <laughs> so the first thing I want to do is just go over how marijuana affects your body. I think that would be interesting for everyone. I'm going to read tidbits of information that I found fascinating. We can talk about them or we can just keep going. You're going to be the one who decides whether or not you think it makes sense or not for okay. the listener. Okay. So we have CB1 receptors within our brain and neurons. So weed... Again, I don't want to always every single time say Delta 9 tetrahydrocannabidiol. (laughs) The active component, THC for short, in weed affects your CB1 receptors. And so there's the presynaptic part of a neuron. That's the part where the neurotransmitters were released. And then they'll go to a postsynaptic part of a neuron. And that postsynaptic part in CB1 receptors release calcium, which is a negative feedback loop to turn off the presynaptic one. So what happens is at a base rate without any weed, you have these CB1 cannabidiol receptors working in your body to help you with things. And one of the main things that they do uh, is help you with memory, with short-term memory, with long-term memory. But there's sort of a really interesting thing that I thought, like short, short short-term memory is actually a good thing. So this kind of kind of sounds confusing, but the analogy they use in the book was an athlete. Athletes need to be present, like when they're playing basketball or whatever they do, like dribble. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> what are those things they use? Balls? So, so many sports. I'm, I mean, so many science books use sports analogies. I'm like, not helping the game. It's like, okay. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's like, could we get a drag race reference? Once in here? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Honestly. So it's like, you need to have a short term memory. Say you're on the phone with someone, they give you a phone number and you're like, oh, wait, and you're trying to like remember it. Like, you have to be good at short-term memory, but also sometimes it's advantageous to forget things, to be mm. present. Like 
there's a it's a complex system that your brain goes through to make sure like oh i'm going to use this information or not mm. the cb1 receptors are a part of that whole thing that you don't realize your brain is doing all the time like naturally. helping to make determinations around which memories linger which memories go away which memories stay all those kind of things exactly when you have weed you are flooding this system so it obviously they're realizing is going to have a, an effect on your memory is that chronic or acute? It's chronic and acute. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, this is the thing we're getting in today to be like, I think we need to start talking more and more as we're all like, weed's amazing. Like, what actually is it? Sure. Doing? Well, I definitely from anecdotal firsthand experience know that I have a terrible time functioning with memory if I'm really high. Just in the sense that like I can be having an interesting conversation and sometimes immediately go, I forget what we're talking exactly. about. Exactly. <laughs> that is such a good point when you're high and you're just like so passionately like, talking about something. Wait, and then someone's like, someone cl <laughs> is like, wait, can you clarify? And you're like, okay, I know I was just screaming about how much I loved what I was talking about, but I kind of <laughs> forgot what I was talking about. Exactly. So that is okay. a great example of the neurons and the, like the neurology and neurophysiology of your brain being overloaded by this THC and causing you to forget or remember things in like skewed ways. Okay. Also, there's a lot of CB1 receptors in your amygdala and the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus regulates appetite. So we all know we do get the munchies. Yes. Uh, that is a very real thing. And in fact, those receptors are really important when you're first born to make babies really hungry and want to be satiated oh. by their mother's breasts. Huh, okay. So that's kind of interesting. It's like, you know, these are all things in our body that we evolve for like a reason. Like a biological function. Yeah. And it's also completely random, they think, that this random plant does this to humans. Like, mm. they can't figure out, like, it didn't evolve for the plant to do this to us. There was no right. purpose for There's it. There's no, it's like, coincidence. symbiotic relationship or between us and this particular plant. I find, Isn't that yeah, weird? Well, people... <laughs> People bring this <laughs> aspect of weed up a lot because it's obviously this quote unquote natural plant. And they're like, you already have the receptors for it in your body. Unlike other drugs that are, you're like introducing new chemicals into your body. Or synthetic chemicals. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. With this, you're introducing like cannabinoids into your body. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Cannabinoids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Into your body, which are already existing in your body. But that, exactly. That's, I just mean that's some people try to pitch that it's like less intense because you're or not that, I, that does not make it good or yeah. bad i just mean i know sometimes people use that as a talking point for weed but it's just mimicking them you know what i mean and right. it is just a coincidence like you know what i mean it'd be, it'd be different if like you did it and every time you did it you started planting seeds and plants and like i just want a garden you know what i mean like it's like oh we're helping the plant but no it's like, <laughs> like we're just like, like eating chips <laughs> yeah but also because of the it affecting the amygdala the amygdala is the part of your brain that makes you um for fear and yeah fear and panic emotional regulation exactly but also calms you down okay so it's like that is one people really like to focus on the fear the fight right. or flight of the amygdala but it's also important to remember that's it's also like a part emotion, that calms right? you like down that sort of like yeah exactly so we're trying to like understand marijuana and our brain it's like oh wait some people do feel calm some people do feel anxious like what is going on here and they found that in small amounts of marijuana people are more likely to feel calm from it in high amounts of marijuana, that's when you hear about people getting more anxious. Mm. So it is affecting your amygdala. So it's going to, you know, make you anxious or calm. Those are obvious effects. I think a lot of people talk about having. If you're worried about them, less, more likely to be calm, more, more likely to be anxious. And the um, hypothalamus and um, appetite, there has also been a correlation with wanting to be satiated with carbs and fried foods. And it's actually linked to the type of nutrition that you want in a certain perspective like you aren't going to want to eat a salad mm, which is I, kind yeah, of interesting honestly. well like you you're an anomaly to me i mean i guess some people are like this but i'm like who wants to eat a salad ever period <laughs> it's not like when i'm stoned i don't want to eat a salad it's like i don't really like eating salads i do it because i'm in my 30s and i'm like thinking i should that's so i love a salad if i have a salad it has to be savory there has to be like rice or quinoa or and like warm tofu or something in it, it you want to stir fry i want a bowl <laughs> i want a bowl oh that's a why bowl. they invented the bowls like the grain yeah. bowls because it's like i don't need these leaves in that's my so <laughs> weird oh my god okay we need to do an episode on salad oh yeah okay. and just be like just be like what does it mean to toss a salad <laughs> kidding um, okay, so this is the part that really stuck out to me uh, about novelty. Okay. So 
People with more rigid personalities are more likely to feel anxious. Okay. Ding, 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 ding. You found me. (laughs) And novelty is experienced in the amygdala when it responds to change. So this part of your brain, when you are in your life and something is changing, you go to a new country, something new is happening, your amygdala is a really big part of the neurophysiology of that experience. So we know that the marijuana is affecting the receptors in the amygdala. And so what it's actually doing is it is making it easier for your brain to experience novelty. So for example, they use like an example of a teenager. There was a bunch of people who they were interviewing who was like, I like it because when I'm walking down the hallway in my school, it feels like an adventure. And I was mm. like, that is why I like it. I am a novelty seeking person. I have like made sort of a worldview around this. Like I know that it slows down time to have new experiences. And I think what marijuana does is it's exactly that. I can go to the corner store and get milk and it's an adventure. (laughs) I'm talking to people. I'm looking at the flowers. And it really is saying that because of the way it affects your amygdala, like it freshens your senses. Music sounds new and more intricate. Food tastes more unique. Your experiences are different. And it's easier for you to experience novelty and things that are the same usually. Yeah, and and I feel that you, maybe this is not fully related, but you really notice things you wouldn't otherwise notice. In normal situations or even just walking down the street, you kind of pay attention. It draws your attention to things that maybe your brain would otherwise just kind of like ignore because they're just always there. I will say, as a person on the other end of the spectrum, as more anxious, I definitely enjoy novelty, but it has to be like in batches or kind of structured for me and like some somewhat predictable. A interesting reason I enjoy marijuana is because it allows me to have novelty with things I'm already comfortable with. Yeah, exactly. So if I'm rewatching a movie for the 17th time, which I find is something I'm more likely to do than you are. Cause you want something new. Yeah. But I'm like, I want to watch that movie again. So maybe if I'm high, I'll see it in a new way. And you, your senses will be more sensitive in that sense that you probably will. Enjoy oh, totally. It yeah. Way. It's like if yeah. I play Zelda and like uh, the second time around, it's like, I would rather do it in a different way. And then I'm, I'm seeing it in a new way and experiencing. It. I just think that's, that is really cool. Yeah. That's, uh, that's that's why I started with that rigid personality thing. Cause it's true. It's like novelty seeking is for certain people. Not right. everyone enjoys novelty seeking the way that like I think that I do. And I know the people in my life who do. And so mm-hmm. it's like marijuana is sort of helpful for that. And then infrequent users of marijuana, there was this really interesting study. One minute they would think was three minutes. So that time dilation that definitely happens to me. Yeah, that time dilation that I think happens to everyone when they have weed, especially if you're an infrequent user, it can really distort your perception of time, which I think uh, for me and for you, we sometimes are like, this is amazing. The night's going on forever. Yeah, you, you like feel like you win so much time and I have a lot of time anxiety. So I'm like, oh my gosh, my evening's so long now. So those are all the really good things. Now, I think your study is also about withdrawal, but we're going to start talking, I think, more realistically about up-to-date research about quitting and maybe the negative effects of this thing that a lot of people, and even so far in this podcast, we have made sound kind of nice. (laughs) (laughs) So it's the most widely used illicit substance. So this is still part of your study. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sorry. This was a book that I read that also... Oh, yeah. So you're... (laughs) You're like already longer than a blankist. It's like, but yeah, true. But it's also like linked up to studies, which I read. I was just like, marijuana, like that is a your joy fave, to me to read about. Dream. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can do more than one podcast on this. You know? Yeah, it's true. And videos galore. They always do well. Um, so it remains the most widely used illicit substance in the U.S. and Europe. Uh, again, it's like we're not including alcohol because it's not considered illicit. And it's becoming less illicit as the states, countries make it more legal. Mm-hmm. But marijuana dependence is very common, and that means that you've used it for more than 10 years for nearly, a, like, every day. Oh, usually, whoa. like, yeah, usually, like, or six t- times a week wow. and six times attempting to quit. Okay. So that's how they define it. It's, like, you've been using it for 10 years or longer. You've tried to quit six times. Like, these are just, like, arbitrary rules, but it's, like, there are quite a few people. I think it's 4.3% of Americans who fall in that category. Okay. So that is like quite intense and um, you continue to do it despite social, psychological, physical impairments, consequences with relationship, family, feeling guilty about it, financial Mm. difficulties, like sleep issues. These are all things that you're Mm. able to say it's affecting you negatively and you still can't quit. I just want to say that because I think some people are like maybe have a relationship with marijuana that they're like it 
feels net positive and therefore like this is for there are people out there who really don't think it's helping them at all and they can't quit still doing it which is interesting well i guess it's maybe it did help them for a long time and it's become so habitual that now it would be harder to stop even if they don't think it because there are yeah withdrawal is a thing and if you're so used to a situation it would be your go-to to to deal with anxiety and, and issues so marijuana withdrawal does exist they think it creates irritability, anger, depression, difficulty sleeping, craving food, and even decreased appetite. And most symptoms occur within 24 to 48 hours. They peak within four to six days, and they can last from one to three to one to three weeks, which I think is interesting because I've always tried to track if I felt that way. Well, I think there's also a stereotype that because marijuana is not a quote unquote addictive, or it's not as addictive as other substances are that as a result, there's not a period of withdrawal. Mm. Do you think that's true of people? Whether or not everyone's not necessarily touting that, but I feel like people do say that. They're like, because it's not addictive, of course I shouldn't have withdrawal. And they do make a point to say that the withdrawal symptoms are less severe than cocaine or alcohol or these other drugs that are more common. So I think it's one of those things where it's like, you know, like you're the small fish like next to these like bigger fish. And so mm-hmm. I think it just gets less rep, but that doesn't mean that we should ignore the fact that you do get withdrawal. Yeah. I just need to also tell you like you, you're, uh, this is my study. Oh my God. Okay. Then I'm going to stay away from that. <laughs> I'm going to stay away from that. I'm mean, the last thing well, you've already said. Okay. No, no. Well, we can keep talking about it. Cause I think it's really important that okay. we like continue to speak about this, but I just think one thing that I really stuck out to me was about memory. Like going back to what I said earlier, It can really affect your ability to hold memories, to recall memories, and to have a quote unquote good memory. And if you do quit weed, they have found that over time you will get a better sense of memory, like ability to uh, recall memories and your memory will actually become more profound, which I thought was interesting because it's like it does affect your ability to remember things, which I think is interesting for people out there who maybe don't think it's doing nothing. It's doing nothing to their brain. And do you know if that is saying to affect your memories while you're stoned or even outside of that? Even outside of that. Le- there's a lot of controversial studies that I don't even know if we can get into about like, like ADHD and different ways of like <clears throat> being able to actually hold your attention, like reading a book or doing things, mm-hmm. especially if you're an adolescent who is, do is smoking or consuming a lot of weed in those really important brain development times it can be really dangerous especially because apparently when you're an adolescent that's an important time for you to understand your morals to understand how to connect with people and to understand novelty experience with others and they're like if you just smoke a joint you can get all those things on your own with the joint and it doesn't allow you to properly develop your brain Mm. to get it with other people so they're really focused focus on this book on making sure young adolescents are really focused on how do we make sure that they curb their marijuana use because it's it's way worse for you and your brain and your memory in developmental stages that makes sense so yeah i'm gonna leave that there because the other stuff is about withdrawal and quitting but i just found that fascinating as someone who was kind of just like weed's amazing (laughs) (laughs) yeah no there's definitely we can do more on this there like of course there's lots of interesting research that shows that there's benefits and perks and not that many downsides to marijuana, but there are lots of studies that also show that there are like some detrimental effects and major impacts on development, like you said, and on memory and on moods of people. And now we're talking about withdrawal. So it's a drug. I mean, I mean, you could say similarly, like with caffeine, like, of course, people go through withdrawal, like they can become yeah, true. addicted in a way that's obviously not the same as being addicted to other like serious hardcore drugs, but it's not any substance that you're if you're drinking pop every day that's like awful for your body you Mm -hmm. know so everything's kind of like that so what are the positive aspects of marijuana for you as a different person than me who maybe is more anxious like i'm just curious like you have a different trajectory towards marijuana use like what would you say is the reason you like it well, I was going to say, let's go on a little break first and then we'll come back and I'll tell you all. The oh, my experience. God. I believe that's a cliffhanger <laughs> to be continued. Dot, dot, dot. Just appeared on the screen. BRB. Comment Today's comment is from Showband Love Science. Cool Ooh. name. <laughs> And it's a five-star review, bitch. High five. (laughs) Smackity smack. (laughs) You guys are amazing. 
This podcast is a great way to get your science fix and laugh and feel good about the world at the same time. I'm recommending this to everyone. Oh, so you. sweet. Thank you so much. And I just want to make sure that you did, in fact, recommend it to everyone. <laughs> yeah, like, prove it. Because we don't like liars here. I'm kidding. Thanks. That's so um, nice. On the flip side, I did. I don't have it open right now. But I did at one point see a one star review and it just said bad <laughs> i mean i mean like at least the simplicity yeah the chef's kiss like, of that get to the point and you did thank bad you. oh my god <laughs> um no but thank you all bad. always for leaving us reviews good or bad mostly you're all so kind and, and it's really heartwarming and nice to see people leave reviews so thank you so much it helps the show allegedly as they say um but shall we get back into some more marijuana uh, of course <laughs> Love that noise. The spells um, cast. So before we went on a break, you had asked me what my relationship with. Weed what is. are the positive aspects of it for you? Um, if any, you can. They don't have to. Be no, anything. no, there are. Um, so definitely, I've always gotten more anxious. On, if I have too much, I get anxious. So there are like some very acute and and noticeable negatives for me, which is why it took me a long time to kind of do much with we, like you were always kind of a little pothead. <laughs> um, and I was always like a little turned off from it, not of you, but of like the drug. Whoa. Okay. But in my adult, no, not, not of you. <laughs> no, no, I know. I'm just funny. I'm like, I didn't know you had to clarify turned that. Off. <laughs> um, no, I guess. So the positives for me, the main one became time. So I have a lot of time anxiety <laughs> and I just found as we age and as now we like run a business and do all, feel busy all the time and the evenings come by and go so fast. It was a really nice way for me to feel like the evenings were longer when I hmm. did it, especially on like a night that would have felt stressful or a time that was stressful. It was like, okay, this is a clear indicator that works done. Cause I am a non-functional one. Like uh, I think you're much more functional when you're high, but I don't work. I can't really do like high intellectual things if you know what i mean i don't really read even but i can like play video games watch movies uh just like chat go on walks do those kinds of things so like relax like for it yeah, allows and, you and to it relax felt like i could have more time i didn't have to stress because i was like oh my gosh it's been only an hour but i feel like it's been three literally yeah like yeah, yeah um and so that was a major positive thing now sometimes i literally like the, now I, I didn't do edibles for a really long time because if I got too high, it's like you're kind of trapped in it. <laughs> now that there is government weed, it's like you can know exactly the amount. So I have figured out the exact amount of milligrams. That's good for me. Um, and now as it's happening, as I am getting high, I literally will be like, I feel so happy. I'm way nicer. I'm funnier. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so like it's kind of I, every time it happens because I don't I still don't do it that much. Yeah, I'm way nicer. No, like, I know. I just notice like the things that would normally trigger me. It's not that I can't get upset, obviously, if I'm high, but the things that would normally trigger me or just like the daily um you know when you kind of get in a funk and you're just like things are not great the only time i've ever had a funk is when there's music playing and i'm getting funky okay bruno mars <laughs> it's not the funk <laughs> i'm kidding but yes um, i know exactly what you mean. yeah so i have those moments where i'm like okay it certainly is a mood changer for me and yeah those are kind of the main things like i know i i definitely still to be honest anxiety. that was a lot, <laughs> that's, a lot <laughs> that's, like, that's the fusing no there are a lot of negatives for me like sometimes if we go on walks and stuff i actually will have a lot of anxiety when we get ready to go on a walk when we're stoned it's like we are like about to go skydiving <laughs> <Enter> <laughs> like you're just like okay greg will you be there for me i'm like we're walking uh, well okay here's the thing because greg <laughs> is such a different person that he doesn't and i thought you don't know what it's like to have like general or sorry just like anxiety but i don't think you know what it's like to have like anxiety anxiety and so i get nervous that if and when i have a, an anxious moment you won't really be there for me because you don't know how to be, because it's hard for you to relate you know so before we go on walks i'm always like i need you to know like here are the things can you please take me serious because if we're far away from home and a stranger starts talking to us or we get lost or any of these But I things. will. I'll be like, okay, let's go home. I'll stop talking to this stranger. Yeah, but, <laughs> but I sometimes need you to know how serious it is. Or I just I just need to know that I've like laid boundaries that will make sure I feel comfortable and safe and know I've pre meditated or pre communicated with you. So in that moment I don't have to. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. That makes sense. 
That's true. You <laughs> premeditating those things ends up just me being like, whoa, he's gonna because, be so scared. But then when we go on the walk, you're always fine. And because I've had some extremely negative experiences. Like what? I, just having a an- full anxiety attacks. Oh, okay, cool. And, so, <laughs> and and panic attacks. Well, hi. Spill the tea. I've es- had a panic attack. Especially uh, on edibles, which last a long time. And so I can feel very trapped. It's It's like knowing you took something that's making you go crazy and now you just know you have to be crazy for the next five hours. Yeah, okay, that's scary. <laughs> and you're trapped in it. You know, there's no out. You can't just be like, okay, well, I can turn it off. Yeah, that's like true. And you can't, like, vomit act- Like or a scary something. movie that's actually so scary, but you can't turn it off. Oh, Saw. You know? Okay. <laughs> Isn't that the plot of Saw? Or, like, Clockwork oh. Orange when they, like, keep your eye open and make you, like, watch this horrible movie? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway... You get my point. What what have you already said? What it's for you? Why is it so good for you? Um, no, but I'm like I think we'll be here for days. Okay. <laughs> if I well, say why it's good for me, should I talk a little bit more? <laughs> yes, about I want to get into withdrawal. withdrawal. Yeah, yeah. You can help me and back me up here because I don't have that much extra to say on top. Okay. Like you kind of talked about the classic symptoms and just the the mere fact that there's now a lot of research to mm-hmm. show that withdrawal is a real symptom of marijuana, not for everyone, and obviously under certain circumstances. So I had found a meta-analysis from earlier this year, April 2020, that looked over, I can't remember the exact amount of studies, but it had 23,000 participants. That's so funny. They're like, we got this new study. Everyone's like, we don't care. We're in lockdown. There's a new pandemic. Like, imagine, <laughs> like, like, like go have weed. Yeah, two years. <laughs> like, I finally finished my study. My net analysis is released. Everyone's like, we do not care. Everyone just eat the weed if you need to eat the weed. Yeah. So it was looking at... Uh, regular users which weirdly they didn't have a consistent definition the meta-analysis was saying how every study has slightly different definitions huh true Uh, and i couldn't find what they were calling their regular but it was regular or dependent users which you defined previously yeah dependent dependent being like every day trying to quit six times and doing it for 10 or more years Mm -hmm. um and ultimately they did find out that 47% 47% of people who quit experience some type of withdrawal if you're wow. a regular or dependent user. But there's a big caveat for this. So that included uh, patients who had psychiatric disorders or had been diagnosed with another disorder. And so when just looking at those people, it was 87%, I think, of people <gasps> who had disorder or who had withdrawal symptoms. Huh. And when looking at the quote unquote general population, it was only 17%. Okay. So if you if you in your own way are like sort of, you know, an average human, maybe fairly mentally healthy and stable, not in the need of other drugs or anything like that, uh, your chances of having withdrawal were much lower, but still 17% of people were having those symptoms you mentioned of irritability, sleep problems, nervousness, anxiety, restlessness, depressed mood, those kind of things. Huh, that's so interesting. Withdrawal from marijuana, I bet, is a very confusing thing because if you've been doing marijuana for so long you're going to feel different not on it Mm -hmm. and i could see how easily you could self-report not having withdrawal but having all those symptoms yeah and just thinking like uh, i just like oh i got a bad night's sleep again (laughs) you know what i mean like just like oh well you know i got a bad night's sleep again yeah because the withdrawal from some other drugs is so intense it's so intense and like vomiting and in the movies there's people like screaming and like like i mean i don't have any first experience or know people but i imagine those are you know based off of some extreme cases of and you can actually drug, like die uh, if you just go like quote unquote cold turkey from yeah, some drugs. Exactly. No one's that's not going to happen with marijuana from any of the research that I've read. Yeah. The, so uh, yeah. It's only last thing I'll say from this study is that they found that the withdrawal symptoms seem to be proportional to the the frequency of your use or the mm. amount that you use. So people who were high heavy users were more likely to experience. It is symptoms. wild how much people use weed because I think. Of myself as someone who like is a pothead because I do think of it as that functional stoner vibe like I at the end of a working day will eat edibles and then just like go to my desk and just like write or like paint or like do th- practical things very like easily in fact it enhances that and I think sometimes can help me be like uninhibited in my own brain and like be creative but then I think that probably averages out to like me doing it like three to four nights a week. But like, I know people who do it like to sleep every day or Mm -hmm. like when they wake up every day and you're like, 
it's one of those things that I think I do as a pothead where I'm like, well, I can name people who are more. And I, like, <laughs> like, it's like a thing. Like, I don't have But then problem. now sometimes I'm like, oh my God, I, like I clearly self-identify as a pothead. Like, do I wonder if there's people in this world who clearly by these definitions are dependent on it, but maybe don't like know, like admit that It's kind of like alcohol when you find out it's like six drinks. No, it's seven. I did a study recently with, through my uh, hospital and doctor that was more than seven drinks a week they consider an alcoholic. Right, where you're like, a lot of people probably don't realize yeah. that, and a lot of people probably are alcoholics. Every single person I've said that to, their draw has truly dropped. And I'm like, it's just that women's <laughs> well, college like, hospital of draw. It's like three drinks on Friday and three drinks on Saturday. I mean, one. no, then you're fine. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> not six, but <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, that doesn't seem like alcoholism to me. Yeah, I know. But then That's I also think definition. there's so many people in this world, too, that don't drink, period. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, we live in a very... The Western society. I know British people sometimes say that they drink even more than Americans. And in my and head, I'm like, Australian oh, Americans. people are grown, They drink a lot. Really? Yeah. But they're all jacked and look like Chris Hemsworth. Or is that just one Australian? <laughs> no, they're all jacked. They are all jacked. Because <laughs> um, they're always traveling. Now. I'm on my bike. I'm like, when do you work? <laughs> Yeah, they get like six to 11 weeks of Like I went on a trip once and met an Australian who was on 11 weeks of vacation. Also, he had saved it up. but Whenever you travel, meet an Australian, they gaslight you. You're like, oh, I'm actually here for two <laughs> weeks. They're like, two weeks? How are you going to experience anything? Yeah, I'm here like, for four <laughs> months. I'm like, okay, well, we all don't have four months off. Can you stop yelling at me? Um, one thing I find interesting with your relationship versus mine with marijuana is... Oh, I thought we going to talk about our cute relationship together. But our relationship, no, that's another episode. <laughs> um, is <laughs> our that, relationship, colon. <laughs> is it what, working? Is it working? <laughs> <laughs> is that... Or do we title a podcast badly? I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? Let us know in the comments below. Sound off. You're Go. like, yeah, we, I don't click them because of that. Um, I'm procrastinating you calling me out. no it's you have a much regardless of you thinking that some people do it more than you and have a, a poor relationship or like a quote-unquote worse relationship i've done a lot of air quotes this episode um you generally have a very positive relationship and view of marijuana and even though <laughs> i use it i still feel shy and weird even though our government it's the, it's all, legal, it's the catholic upbringing it might be i feel like the shame almost of it all, bad to talk right? about it yeah yeah and I don't know. I shouldn't have just like put that on you. I, I immediately what? deflected off of me. I'm like, it's your Catholic. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't think it's specifically that, but that might be part of it. It's that sort of more reserved upbringing. And I grew up thinking I would never do it. It might have been my own personal You grew existence. up thinking you would never do it? Why? I don't know. When I was younger, like I didn't have a problem with drinking. When I met you, I was like afraid of marijuana. Yeah, I know. Not afraid. Like, really I, knew, I knew it wasn't as bad as other drugs, but I was still like bothered that you did it. We went to a school that's like the University of Guelph. <laughs> it's like known for marijuana, and it's just, like everyone is like wearing like parachute pants and like a like okay. like an off kilter <laughs> hat, and is like a vegan who smokes weed. And then Mitch was like, every time he saw a joint, it was like he was seeing someone injecting heroin. He was like, oh my god. And I was like, wait, I don't know, like if we're weird or if you're weird, like. Uh, no, I know, I know. And so even to this day, I'm like, I think it's a positive experience for me and many people. And I have no judgments anymore to other people, but I still feel taboo to openly talk about it, knowing that like our parents will hear this. You know? Wow, my parents definitely know about me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you're telling me that like there was a time when you were young where you were like clapped your hands together and picturing you praying. You're like, I will never do marijuana. <laughs> I mean, I don't like, It's so praying, interesting but... as a kid to think that. So let's clarify. Like I grew up and went to a Catholic school, but I was never like I really identifying as like a religious person. And when so I picture Catholic that... like, school, I picture like a girl hiking up her skirt and being like smoking weed and being like, yeah, like, that's your, the like, system. Dumb public school upbringing that didn't teach you enough about other hey, kinds of schools. I'm pretty sure I had a better education because <laughs> I was not at a Catholic school where they were like, no. oh, sex isn't real. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> you don't even know. Don't All even I know, know is that your sex ed was really bad. It was. That's the one area for sure. Yeah, truly one of the most important <laughs> ones. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, fine, fine. I'm not defending. My were there was there school. not very much drugs? I just picture Catholic. Oh, there was. No, there was. Oh, like okay. you actually were describing my school, and it was like hiking up skirts, and it was girls getting pregnant, and yes. Oh my god, because they weren't teaching them how to use condoms. Yeah, you were like, you'll go to hell. Oh, like my. what they say. People are like, are we gonna learn about condoms? They're like, you're going to hell. Okay, so it was a you at a Catholic school thing. It was what? Like it was you at a, like people. Other people at your school. It wasn't like you were all coming together. Like, huh? We will no, never do. My that, school was notorious. 
curious for certain drugs. I, I obviously lots of people at my school didn't, but there were lots of people who did even in high school, but I never really uh, ever tried weed until I met you. <laughs> I did not talk openly about marijuana with my parents in high school, but once <laughs> like I was very scared to tell them and I actually didn't smoke nearly as much marijuana in high school as like my friends. I was in like a stoner crew of boys and actually through therapy realized that marijuana was an interesting way for me to like cope with hanging out with straight dudes like I could do it and like we would all have lots of fun and it was like a way for me to like feel mm-hmm, a like part connect. of like ev- these people who were truly talking about BMX bikes all the time and I'm like there's nothing about BMX bikes that interests me at all smoke a joint I'm like oh that's kind of a cool bike I guess <laughs> and we were like outside we had just gotten high it was like one of the first times and I was listening to Coldplay <laughs> with my headphones like dancing alone and I stood in front of a bike jump and someone on a BMX bike jumped right into me hit me because i wasn't paying attention i flew into a puddle all over my coat (laughs) and i was like covered in dirt and i was like we were gonna hang out for the whole day i don't know it was a saturday or something and i needed to go home and change i was like okay i'm just gonna quickly like sneak in change my coat i opened the door to like an hors d'oeuvre party that my parents (laughs) have with like 14 adults i'm covered in mud stoned like for one of the worst times and i can't even begin like thinking of anxiety like think of imagine like i just like look at all and they're all, Greg how's school how are you doing I'm like I can't even talk I'm like cold play it's oh great the bam it was, are your parents finding out right now that oh you were yeah they wouldn't you? remember this because there's like enough parties and I don't think it meant anything to right. them but it to me I was like they're gonna know I'm high I'm covered in mud like <laughs> yeah no I mean if they're listening now yeah this is how they find out it was like I wasn't like I never told them I don't even know if it's a, if it's a distinct memory to them or not but to oh me oh my gosh right it stood out as like yeah pure fury you were caught you were in like such an awkward situation like the weed's making me feel a novel experience I didn't need that novel experience right. off too the far top. too far yeah uh, well do you think you'll ever quit? <laughs> <laughs> you have truly know. been doing it for like 20 decades. years. Decades, not 20 years. That's decades. I didn't, sorry, over a decade. I didn't start when I, I was 12. Like at the same time you yelled decades and then yeah. I said 20 years and you went, not 20 years. <laughs> like 15. Um, <laughs> well, um, maybe I don't than- know because I want to think like, because sometimes you hear, yeah, let's quit smoking cigarettes when they have kids. But then everyone what? I know who, who's had kids are certainly has not stopped and like <laughs> consuming weed. In fact, I feel like it's like they've picked it up more. Um, so I think I might not ever. Do you think you like in the nursing home yes. just getting ripped? Well, yeah, people of our generation probably will take this to beyond the grave. Take this to the grave. <laughs> what, what did you say? Um, do, do you think, think you'll do less? I I, uh, I think so. I think this podcast is part of my journey to less. Okay. Um. What about you? Do you think you'll ever quit? Yeah. I mean, I have no... Like, you just said yes and shook your head no. Well, <laughs> because what I was trying to communicate was that it doesn't really matter that much to me. The amount I do it and I don't feel that dependent on it. How do I describe this? Like, I might I might not. <laughs> it's kind of like that yeah. right now. Like, if, if, if suddenly there was a big life change and I was like, it just doesn't fit in my life. I wouldn't, maybe I would have moments of being like, Oh, I wish I could still do that every now and then. But if suddenly it became like the most illicit illegal drug, like out of nowhere and it would crack down so hard, I'd be like, okay, I just like probably won't do that ever again. And oh my God. If like everything, I mean, that seems weird now. I'm like, that's a government. really weird situation. Just kind of, I would obviously <laughs> feel really strange about that, but there's part of me that's like, maybe there'll be a point where I just stop, but I have no intention to be like, okay. And then I will stop. <laughs> it's mostly just like we climate change hits. All things fall apart and they're not growing marijuana. We don't have the capacity to be oh, all girl, like, It's like the easiest plant to grow. <laughs> yeah. True. Tis a weed. They're growing <laughs> like, it right out this yeah, window like here. Our neighbors have like a giant yeah. plant that's like, and it grows <laughs> fast. <laughs> Literally, we're like, oh, like, <laughs> is that how we play? And then the next three days, it's like way bigger. Um, okay. Anything else you want to bring up today? No, that was great. I'm so happy to have learned all that with all of you. We hope it was helpful and cheers. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, hashtag side note podcast. If you want to talk to us about it or you can leave a review us on Insta. Yeah. Leave a review on iTunes on the YouTube video. If you're watching this, leave comments. I love reading them. I should respond to them more often, but I do read the YouTube comments yeah, and we the do. comments you put anywhere. So thank you guys so much for listening and everything. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.